our Lord, creator of the universe. We thank you, oh Lord God Almighty, for gathering your children together to you this evening. Father God, we have not gathered unto man, we have gathered unto you. We ask that by your spirit to bless this gathering this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we ask for mercy and forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord. Everywhere we've sinned against you, in thought, word, and deed, by commission and omission. Father, have mercy. Forgive us. Perish all the sins of our lives in your self forgetfulness. Lord God, release the blood of Jesus Christ. Let it wash us thoroughly clean. And as we gather unto you this evening, and you behold us in gathering unto you, you would you will not see sin in any one of us. Rather, you see us clothed in the wilding garment of your sins. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayer so. Father God, let your spirit speak through the voice of your man this evening that your children, all of us, will benefit so that your truth will spread. In Jesus' name we pray. Bless your children who have made the sacrifice to join us, especially our brother Michael and our sister Fatima. May you bless them for coming on time to hear your word. The reward that is due to them, may you bless them with it in Jesus' name. Amen. The children who are around here in the church, Father, may you also bless them abundantly, similarly, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank you, Lord. I surrender myself unto your spirit. Father, let your spirit work me. Let your spirit speak through me. Bless the Lord. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Revelation 12. Woman. Finished on Wednesday. We finished on the notes in which we asked the question. Where will the place of refuge be? You know, when we were, when we were looking at um, Revelation 12, We we saw we saw in verses verses four I think six and fourteen. I'm trying to get the Exact this thing. Please open my heart. It's not this Okay, okay. We saw in Revelation. 12 verse, verse 6, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared of God.
I apologize. It's just network problem. There's actually nothing I can do about it. But let me just go back again. I just read Revelation 12, verse 6, which showed us that the woman, which of course is Israel, fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her for three and a half years. So when the attack came from the Antichrist forces or from <coughs> Satan, God you already knew, already had God already had uh, something to do. He had already from time eternal prepared a place where Israel will flee to. So it's not Israel's idea. It is God's own idea. A place where Israel will flee to. <clears throat> and she will stay there for three and a half years. When in the same chapter 12 of Revelation, when you look at verse 14, it says, and the woman, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, that's a year, and times two years, and half a, and half a time, half a year, three and a half years again. You see again, that place was described as her place which means it's something that will be given to her and she will face nourishment there. The problem now is, where exactly is this place of refuge? This was where we stopped last Wednesday. And that is what I want to discuss with you today. The reason we need to talk about this is you will find that uh, this topic, Revolution 12 Woman, yes, my Rab just said it's Israel. Um, and he paid attention to the fact that the sun, moon, and stars already we know through what happened in the time of Joseph during his dreams that that meant Israel. Well, I'm not aware of any sermon of his that was detailed concerning this matter. And certainly, in the message sermons, I've not come across, and practically every pastor I know, I've also not said to come across where he was talking about the place that Israel fled to or will flee to when the time comes. However, you will find that the generality of opinion among the people is that Israel will flee to America. And I have said over and over again that that does not make any sense whatsoever. I don't see it. But many say it is. And a lot of those who say it is got that idea from some followers of Abraham who were there when Abraham was on the ground and followed in his ministry. Abraham used, him, used them in his ministry. And when Abraham was gone, and they started their own various ministries, and they started preaching on some things that Abraham did not dwell so much upon. And practically all of them gave the impression that uh, Israel will flee to America. I have consistently said there is no Bible for that. Other than these people were with Abraham, 
you see their names mentioned in the sermons of Abraham. They were helpers of Abraham. And when Abraham left, they started their various ministries. But I don't think that because of that, that God has turned them to Abraham. So they're just another minister like any other minister anywhere on the face of this earth. It is only when Abraham has spoken that we can bow our heads to what he has said, knowing that he is the apostle, God's prophet messenger to restore the truth to this age. So I always say to them, my reason is something will happen to America at this end time. The Lord Jesus Christ gave that revelation to Brother Abraham that Sunday morning in 1933. The seven visions he gave, five of them have happened exactly as Brother Abraham narrated them to the church. Jesus gave him the uh, uh, revelation that morning and said he should go straight to the church and tell them. He wrote it down, went to the church, and he told them. Five of them have happened. The sixth one is happening right, right now, as we watch developments in America. We will still see the confirmation of the sixth one, but it's in operation now. Already during this last inauguration of the Biden administration, we already saw something that Bram said that day that has come to pass in what the woman, the vice president wore. He described it and gave the color. We've seen that one. So we are now watching the other things regarding the woman who rise in America. So the sixth one is on. The seventh one, which is the last of them, of the visions, is that Abraham heard a loud explosion. He turned around to see what it was all about. And what he saw was continental America in debris. It's been blown up. Therefore, Revelation 12 woman, it is going to happen in the 70th week, remember this clearly, it's going to happen in the 70th week. That is we, the church, would have gone in the rapture. Only those who missed rapture in the church will still be around at that time. At the 69th week, Jesus was crucified. Then Paul, the seventh year to which is which is just seven years, should have come in immediately, but he didn't. God pressed the pause. And during that pause, the seventh church age came in, has come in, which is this church age time. The seventh church age this time. That has run on, run on now for about 2,000 years. It is going to end very soon. And it's going to end on the day of rapture. When the fullness of the Gentiles shall have come in, according to Romans 11, 25. Once that has happened, the 70th week, which has been in abeyance since 2000 years, will kick in, will start. And it's going to last only seven years. And the distinguishing mark of this 70th week is the Antichrist coming into open display of himself. You won't need to ask who is the Antichrist because it will be so clear to everybody around. So this Revelation 12 woman thing, Mommy, where you here? Yeah. 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 
this revelation, uh, this revelation uh, 12 woman, as you see, is something that's going to happen at in this same 70th week. So if Jesus had given the revelation of America being destroyed at that time, so does it make any sense that anybody can then run to America from, from Israel? No sense. Another thing, Antichrist will be there with his force, with his forces. Common sense tells anybody, when you invade a land, you must make sure you seize its ports and its airports straight away. Because these are the areas by which the land you are conquering can receive support, receive reinforcement. So it seems to me that to make sure that nobody can reinforce them so that you can finish them off. So I asked those who say that Israel is going to flee to America. I said, so when the Antichrist arrives in Israel, because he's going to arrive in Israel, we saw it on Wednesday, we read the scripture, Jesus said it in Matthew 24, where you see the abomination stand in the holy place. He said, begin to run. Don't go back to your house if you're outside of the place. Just begin to run from that side. So that means at the time this flight of the woman will take place, the enemy, meaning the anti craft forces, would have been already in Israel. So is it at that time that this Israel that will be running will now start running to the airport to say they want to fly? Which plane will fly them out of uh, Ben Gurion Airport? Which plane? The anti-craft forces will have destroyed any aircraft defined on any airfield in Israel for a start. That is just simple military strategy. Therefore, it cannot be. There's just no way it can be America. Even those of them who say, oh, um, Ezekiel 38, 39, God war. There are some, even in this message, who teach that the Ezekiel 38, 39 war will only happen after millennia. When we were teaching this subject, I made sure I kept on showing you reasons why that is just not correct. It's just not correct. And even if he says it's correct, that does not remove the revelation that Jesus Christ gave. That at this end time, America will face destruction, just as Russia also will face destruction. So you see, it cannot be America. So if it is not America, the question now is where? This is what I want to address you on this evening. And I'm asking you, please pay attention. I've always maintained that every Bible question has a Bible answer. We cannot depend on intellectuality or intellectualism of man. God did not bother with man when he was given his word. He used man, yes but it is God's own idea, not man's. So to prove my point, I'm asking you to turn now with me to Isaiah chapter 16. It's a very, very, it is a one, it's a scripture, a scripture that is not, you don't even see it. Even the, the, the passage is so small, but it's there. It is there on 
the same. So Isaiah chapter 16, I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 5. Isaiah 16, verse 1 to verse 5. I'll try my best within the time available to me now to explain. I try to make some notes so that I don't miss any important point. Okay, Isaiah 16, 1 to 5. Send ye the lamb to the ruler of the land from Selah, to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. Verse 2. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the faults of Anon. Three, take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noon day. <coughs> Hide the outcasts, hide the outcasts. Bewray not him that wandereth. Bewray simply means betray. Bewray not him that wandereth. For let my outcasts dwell with thee, Moab. Be thou a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the ex extortioner is at an end. The spoiler seizes. The oppressors are consumed out of the land. Five. And in mercy shall the throne be established. And he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David judging and seeking judgment and hasting righteousness. Inside of this passage, my brethren, is the truth of where Israel will go. It's a passage that is not popular. That is why people miss it. But it is still there. And we are going to look into this. In this passage we just read now, it is saying, it's addressing God through Isaiah. Here was addressing Moab. And all of you know where Moab is today. Is it possible? Can you find the map quickly? Map quickly? Our host will show us the map, so I see where Moab is. But Moab is in the country today, which we call Jordan. All right, there are some. It's in the country which we call Jordan. I'm trying to Yes, more. Where is that mentioned here? I cannot see more here. No more except on the map. What you see, all of this you see here, this is the country called Jordan today. Of course, an Islamic country. It's in Arabia, but it's cut out from Arabia and it's called Jordan. But Moab is somewhere there. I don't know why I can't get it now. Anyway, here in this thing we are talking about, 
Isaiah is advising Moab to send the tribute to the rulers in Jordan. Now you are going to ask yourself, what rulers? What is this Bible talking about? For you to understand what he's talking about, you have to go to 2 Kings chapter 3, and we will read only one verse. Please find that Jordan. Go for that to look for this scripture. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 4. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 4. It says, And Mesha, king of Moab, was a shipmaster and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs, lambs, and an hundred thousand ramps with the wood. So this measure was king of Moab. But we know how this thing is so divided, all these places. Why is it so difficult to get to that? Mesha was the king of Moab. Obviously, he had some good knowledge in keeping sheep, but he was rendering unto the king of Israel a hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams with the wood. This is what is called tribute. This is called, called tribute. When you have when you have conquered a place, to show that you are the boss, it's okay. You be paying this so and so and so. So that was what this measure was paying, and that's a lot of money. You cannot almost call it wicked. I did ask. I said, how much would the ship cost? And I was told around $20. And if you look at the quantity here, it's 200,000. If you multiply that by $20, it will give you $4 million a year. So in this period we are talking about, which is about 900. B BC 900, about 900 years before Christ came, the king of Judah was pressing down on the neck of the king of Moab and asking them to pay him this tribute every year. So as we'll expect now, after a while, they rebelled. Moab rebelled against Israel. And so there was war. That was when Ahab now sought the now sought the uh, the cooperation of King Jehoram, and they went to go and fight against Moab. And of course, God's prophet at the time was very angry with. With them for trying to do that. But what's important is that this measure, King of Moab, was paying tribute to Israel. 
So this is what was being referred to by Isaiah. Less than 200 years after. So he was referring to this and asking Moab, advising Moab to send tribute of land to the rulers in Judah. That's Mount Zion. That's in Judah. Okay. Why? The advice was for Moab to be at peace with the Jews in the last days. The last days being the days you and I are now. And once they are at peace, then they will be in a position to welcome the Jews into their land at the time that the Jews will be in that trouble. That is what you see. That is the foundation to this scripture that we are dealing with. There is a send you the lamb to the ruler of the land from cellar to the wilderness onto the mount of the daughter of Zion. Mount of daughter of Zion simply means Jerusalem. So Isaiah is reminded drawing attention back to what had happened 200 years, around 200 years before when Moab was paying tribute to the king of Judah. And he said, this now, remember this is now a prophecy. This, this is now a prophecy. Okay, look at what we have here now. You can see Moab. This is what we are dealing with now. And of course, you know who is Moab. You have Moab, you see Ammon. These ones, they, they descended from Lot. These are the children, their descendants, Ammon, Moab, they came out from the daughters of Lot, getting their fathers drunk when they ran away from uh, What's that place? Sodom, and then they took him. They got the, when they got the father drunk, one slept with the father the first night. The next night, they got him drunk again. Then he slept with the second one. And both of them gave, became pregnant and gave birth to children. So one was Ammon, one was Moab. And you can see Judah on this side. You can see that there is the Jordan River, the Jordan River separating this side, Judah, from this side. Moab is on eastern side of Jordan River. Judah, like Jerusalem, is on the western side. So this uh, prophecy, through it, Isaiah first reminded Moab how they used to send tribute at the time that they were under the suzerainty of the king of uh, Judah. But remember this prophecy is about these last days. And if you remember the prophecy of these last days, you know that there will be something that we here call the war of territorial reclamation. Today, that land that we first saw, what, what the whole story showed us, what I showed that this is Jordan today, in a sense in Arabia, but it's called Jordan today. That land is going to fall to Israel just as from River Nile of Egypt to going to uh, Lebanon, going to Syria, going to Iraq, and part of Arabia, back to that Jordan place. All of this will fall into the hands of Israel during the WTR. 
when Israel will be going to take the land, the promised land that God gave Abraham, which is from the river of Egypt to river Euphrates. The Euphrates is in Iraq. So that's the land that God gave us for this land. So in this period that we are living in now, this moment that you and I are now, not long from now, that war between Israel and the Arabs will take place. And Israel will conquer those lands. It's not as if Israel will drive them into the sea, no. They will still be in the place, but Israel will be their boss. Just as it was at that time when that King Mesha, which we read in Second Kings, was paying tribute to King of Judah. So Isaiah is now prophesying that at this end time, which is this period now, that situation is going to be repeated whereby Israel will have sovereignty over the land of Moab, which is in Jordan today. Israel is going to have sovereignty over them. They still be there as Jordan, but they know that their master is Israel. So Isaiah is prophesying here that that is going to happen. And now tell him Moab what you are going to do during that time because something is going to happen at that time. And God speaking through uh, Isaiah is now trying to explain to Moab what Moab should be doing at that time. So this advice was for Moab, which will be at peace with Israel in the last days. God is now speaking to them that when Israel will flee from the attack of the Antichrist, that Moab should receive Israel into their land. It makes sense, doesn't it? Moab is next door to Israel. Or if you like, Israel is next door to Moab. It's only that Jordan River. That's all there is to it. If I something that some of us would not like to hear, but the truth is when Jesus was baptized, at the point we are just baptized by Jesus, that point today is in the land of Jordan. That part of River Jordan where Jesus was baptized is in Jordan until today, which is Islam. So you can understand. With Jesus baptized in a place, and then that place will be lost to, uh, to uh, the foreign religion. It cannot be. It's just for you to bottle. It's just for you to have an idea what God is telling us, how it's going to run this end time. So you see, God was now saying to Moab, which is Jordan today, when that time comes and the Antichrist is moving against Israel, they are going to run away. And the place they are going to run to will be your land. Receive them. So if you look at verse 2, you get it. When you look at verse 2, it says, For it shall be that a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the faults of Anna. To start with, this border, Anna is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. I don't think I can find that here now. But we won't bother to waste our time concerning it. But there's a river, river Anna is a very important it's a very important river, but you know, so I cannot find that river here, yeah, but it does around, it's also not just around here. Okay, but what is it saying? What is it saying that as a bird 
cast out of her nest. You see, it begins to wonder about. So the daughters of Moab, when this seventieth week starts, remember seventieth week, the world will do what? Shouting, hey, we have peace because the Antichrist will have established that covenant of Daniel 9.27, which the Bible says, we for one week, seven years. It says it's established with many, many nations. Israel also will be very happy because now they have their temple. Now they have to say nobody should disturb them from worshiping the way they like in their temple and all that. So as far as Israel is concerned, nobody could love them better than this man who has made this treaty that has now ensured for Israel that they can practice their religion very safely in their land. But the two prophets of Revelation 11 will be one in Israel saying, no, that man is not true. He is the Antichrist. He is going to come against Israel. And Israel will say, you are talking nonsense. But remember, this is going to happen in the first part of the 70th week of seven years. So first part is three and a half years. For you who are a Christian today, who are careless about what God has, is teaching you, you will be suffering at that time. You will be paying for your foolishness with your life because the army of the Antichrist, his followers, they know you where you are today, where you are shouting, I bind you, I cast you. They are going to come to you at that time. I say to you, now, say, we are still here. Why did you follow the other ones to go away? So are you for us or you are not for us? And then you find yourself saying, I cannot serve your God. Then they say, die, and they will kill you there. Straight away. So there will be matters, Christian matters at that time. And then the Antichrist will finally, at three and a half years, it will enter into Palestine. It will enter into Jerusalem. Other than the two prophets should be killed. And after the two prophets are killed, the Antichrist will enter the temple and tell the Jews, stop. Don't worship anything again. We'll be looking for a Messiah so I can worship him. I am that Messiah. Begin to worship him now. And the Jews will say, never. And the Antichrist will say, in that case, die. So that's when the Great Tribulation will start. So the Antichrist is coming in to Jerusalem at the head of a mighty force. And when he will start <coughs> moving against Israel there, the people in Moab, they will start shaking. That's what you see in that verse 2 of Isaiah 16. As a wandering bed, they will be disturbed at the events that are taking place in Israel as the Antichrist forces are just busy finishing everybody that is not for them. They'll be wondering, the Moabites, which is the Jordanians today, they'll be wondering, hey, hey, hey. We hope that this Antichrist man will not come with his forces across the Jordan and just attack us. Look at that map there. Once he crosses the place, he's coming straight into Moab. You know, so there's fear in their hearts. Moab is the first one he's going to see. Yeah. What are we going to do? So that's why it's like a bed. A bird cast out of its net, what we do, it should just be flying around. We could say, where am I going to fly to now? This. So that's the language that uh, 
Isaiah used to describe the consternation in which Moab would be at that time. And then Isaiah, at that same time, will not tell them what they are going to do. So there will be much distress because they don't know what's going to befall them. You know? And many of them will be run up and down, leave their, leave their homes because they want, if you come see a world, they will flee to. And then they'll find that the Jews are now rushing into their land. And so God is now speaking to Jordan, more in the language of the Bible, but Jordan today, God is now speaking to them what exactly they are going to do when that happens. Because the Jews running away from the Antichrist, the Jordanians, remember they are Muslims, they are also running away from the Antichrist. That makes the Antichrist a common enemy of both the Jews and these Muslims. Therefore, all these Pentecostal churches from America down to this country who are preaching that the Antichrist will be a Muslim, as you can see straight away that you are wrong. Because if the Antichrist would be a Muslim, why would Jordan be running away? They should be happy to embrace, embrace him and his forces. So it's just not true. The Antichrist cannot be a Muslim. Why? Antichrist simply means somebody who mentions Christ. The Islam talk about the answer is no. So the Antichrist is going to start from the pulpit in the church. It is from the pulpit that the Antichrist message is going to go forth. So let's stop pretending, let's stop trying to say, no, uh, Christianity is so means we cannot have Antichrist. Now lie, the Antichrist is coming out of Christendom, steady, and it's coming out from Rome. As, uh, Daniel 9.26, linked with Daniel 9.27, already told us this. Let's stop trying to be politically correct by pretending we don't know. We know. Read your Bible. It tells you where it's coming out from. Don't pretend. Okay? So the Antichrist So the Antichrist, in verse 3, let me just finish what the Antichrist will do. So when the Antichrist will move now, so remember, God is saying to Jordan, more in this place, taking the Jews who are fleeing. That's just the message. Don't betray them. So this betray you see there in verse uh, three simply means betray. That's old English betray. It means betray in the way we talk today. So don't betray them. When they come to your land, give them protection, cover them up, so that the enemy will not find them. We now go back to Revelation twelve. You will see where Bible says. They will flee to this place which has been prepared for them by God. Because it's prepared for them by God, that's why it is covered by a prophecy, the prophecy of Isaiah 16. I hope you are with me here. So you see, but well, something is going to happen. I'm not quite sure now whether I should. Oh. Let me see where I can also look at something again. In verse 3, it says, Take counsel. 
what they say in fact is they take counsel, execute judgment, make thy shadow as the night in the midst of the noon day, hide the outcasts, betray not him that wanders. Who is it that is wandering now? It is Israel running away from the Antichrist. So God speaking to uh, uh, Moab, Jordan today, through Isaiah saying, help Israel with your counsel. Help Israel with your counsel. Ask for Israel. Decide for Israel what he should do because you know they're already confused. So you counsel them. In addition, shelter them. Be a shade over them, even at noonday. God was talking directly to Moab. Look at it there. He said in verse 4, see, let my outcasts dwell with thee more. Who are the outcasts of God? The Jews. God is blessing more Jordan to this. Let my outcasts dwell with you. Don't throw them out when they're in this danger. Let them live within your land. Shelter them from this enemy who are pursuing after them. Don't allow the enemy to destroy them. This is the message. Now please show us Petra. Now this place where they are going to fly to Remember in verse 1, it says, send ye the lamb to the ruler of the lamb from Selah. This place called Selah in the Bible, the name it is called today is Petra. So the place they are going to, okay, look at it. When you travel, for those of you who want to go to the East, to Middle East, when you go there, go to this place. Today it is called Petra, P-E-T-R-A, Petra. That's a particular place I'm looking for. Let me see, just roll it a bit. It's the entrance to it. You see, all of these things you are seeing here, they're all built out of rock. Petra is rock. And everything you are seeing here is built out of rock. If you like, call it carved out of rock. Unfortunately, we, 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 this picture does not capture the entrance to Petra. As I speak with you today, eh, no vehicle has come into Petra. Just see how long Petra has been. Remember when Isaiah was talking about Petra here? That was over 700 something years before Christ. And Christ has been gone now for about 2,000 years. This land is still there. For those who speak English, priest time. They don't allow your motor to come in there, to come and start pushing your petrol fumes and all that. When you enter, you go on donkey, or horse, or mule, or whatever. When finally, any day we find the, the, the entrance to the place, 
you will see is a natural formation. And if you know anything about warfare, eh, it's a place that if you are in there, anybody coming to attack you and you have some good weapon in your hands, that enemy will suffer serious casualties to penetrate into that place. That is the place that God set out for the children of Israel to run to. And of course, it is easy for them to go because it is next door. Just across Jordan, and you are in uh, Moab, which is Jordan today, and Moab, which is Jordan today, you have this place called Petra, which in Bible was called Sela but it is called Petra. So that is where they will go to. God has prepared everything for them there so that the enemy will not be able to come there to touch them. And so what God is telling more there in verse 4 is he cover them up there until this spoiler, this extortioner until his time will be over when he will do all that is written of him to do and after that in verse 5 and in mercy shall the throne be established this is talking about jesus christ setting up the kingdom of heaven on earth remember when it is three and a half years left in the 70th week of Daniel, that is the great tribulation. And this great tribulation will end with Jesus Christ coming down to take on the Antichrist and his forces at the Battle of Armageddon. So this is what you see. Now, what is the issue? The Antichrist would have continue to pursue the Jews, the fleeing Jews. Remember these fleeing Jews that the remnants? The Antichrist will have continued to pursue them into Petra. But God will allow something to happen. When we read Daniel 11, Daniel 11, 44, let me see if I can get that one quickly. Daniel 11.44. In Daniel 11.44, you know many of us are experts at Daniel chapter 9, but we don't go further than that, and there's still a lot of information beyond Daniel 9. In Daniel 11.44, The Bible says, let's start from verse 41. If you see, because when the Antichrist comes there, it will be a conquering force. It will be at the head of the European army. This one is called United uh, Europe, EU today. Well, that is okay. European. European Union. It has a large force. Larger, when they, if they come together as EU, the force they have, is higher and mightier than that of America. Hey. Almost, yes. You can see how difficult it is. How do you want to penetrate a place like this? 
If your forces stand on top of here, anybody coming from out there to come in here, it's meat for you. It's exactly as it is to today. You don't find anyone bringing cement there to come and build anything. No, 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 it is not allowed. All these things that you have today that say it's your technology, development, eh, eh, keep it outside. Yeah, it's nature. Bring your horse in. But any of these are contraption that you call is modern, you don't want it here. And this thing has been like this for thousands of years. Because that is where God is going to hide the fleeing Jews that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. When he said, when you see that abomination stand in that place, say, don't wait. If you're on the field, begin to run. Don't ever try to say, I want to take my clothes. May I go pack my suitcase? You are wasting your time. You die. Just be running away. You will know where to run to because you see others running and you just follow them. You are just running across, wading across the Jordan, and you're coming out straight into Petra. God has prepared the Jordanians to receive you there, to protect you there, to feed you there, to have everything you need there. They are not seeing you as Jew, our enemy. That's why war of territorial reclamation would have gone on before. I don't know if you can you catch what I'm trying to say. Everything is linked together at this end time. That's why they have to happen. That's why in Ezekiel 38, 39, when Russia and the forces will be going to attack Israel, Saudi Arabia will say to them, why do you want to go and attack, attack Israel? This is a peaceful country. It's not disturbing anybody. Does that make sense today? If they find, if any Arab country finds anyone going to attack Israel today, it will say, how much can I do to finish them? But when that time comes, they'll be the ones fighting on behalf of Israel to say, what have they done? That is why when now the Antichrist finally arrives in Palestine, in Israel, halfway through the seventh year, the seventh, uh, seventh year to it, Israel will flee to this place, and the people there will not be hostile. They will receive their word. First, WTR has taken care of that, and God, through Isaiah, as only said, what will happen there? Because that means the Spirit of God will move at that time to bring to pass that which is stated in Isaiah 16. Entry to the house of those who will say, hide them. So even if the enemy comes and say, where are these people who run here? Say, All of that has been done by God. He prepared that place for them. But you see, where I want to read to you now, as we close, give me five minutes. 11, Daniel 11. Before Daniel 11, where are you from? Daniel 11, 36 to 39. You will just give a description of the Antichrist and how he will be moving at that time. Then in verse 40, he says, And at the time of the end, brings you back to this our time again, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a wild wind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. The home forces from Egypt in the south and the northern areas over Israel, they will move against the Antichrist, he will just crush them, this is no problem. 41, he shall enter also 
into the glorious land to remember it's on its way to Israel. So it cross any opposition that is arising. Then 41 is shall enter into the glorious land, that is Israel. And many countries shall be overthrown. You conquer many true countries in the process of doing that. But this shall escape out of his hand. As his conqueror of the countries, look at what will escape out of the hand of Antichrist. He will not go to attack them. God will ensure that. What are they? Edom and Moab and Ammon. When you look at that place you showed us before, you will see these places are there. If you can get that map. <laughs> Direct me to Edom and Moab. Where is it? I can't see your thing. Okay, you see, this is Edom, this is Moab, this is Ammon. When the Antichrist has come to Jerusalem and is destroying, God will ensure that he will not be able to cross the Jordan to move into Edom, Moab, and Ammon. All of these now are in what you call Jordan today. God will make sure he will not be able to go there. That's what you are seeing there in verse 41. He says, He shall enter into the glorious land of Israel, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. Then for the two, he shall strike for his hand also upon the countries and the land of Egypt shall not escape the conquer of these places. 43. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps as his conquering his duty. Yes, my church man and I was busy collecting things. Now look at you are, where we are going. 44. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. That's Antichrist. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to, to make away many. So, as he's preparing now to go and move against uh, Israel, where it has run into, she has run into in uh, Moab, that can go because confusion for him. The kings of the East, meaning China, Japan, Korea, that time I've not known, not Korea, exactly. All of them, the Vietnam, all of these people, they will have crossed uh, Euphrates and are getting onto Israel. And they are coming for him, at, coming for the Antichrist forces at Jerusalem. Because remember, with all that has happened in WTR, Israel and the Arabs, with what has happened, what would have happened with the Gulf War, which would take care of uh, Russia, uh, Iran, Turkey, and all of these other countries, and finally we bring destruction to Russia and to America. Those ones are out of the way. What you now have left is just Europe. EU, and that's what we give the Antichrist is power. Because it's the Roman Empire of old, which is still on today, and you call it EU. And the Antichrist will be at the head of it. Who was it that crowned Charlemagne as the emperor, emperor of the Holy Roman Empire? The Pope. So that's what you are seeing now. So here's what has entered, 
and then the people from the east said a lie. We are going to take that place. So China and the rest of them will not be coming. He will hear that news. Say, yeah, what is this? Remember, it's, what he wanted to do was to go after the Israel, the Israelites who have run away and have run into uh, Jordan in Petra. But when we now hear that these people are coming, and then from part of Northern Europe, they're also coming. We say, no, this one's in our way first. Let me deal with these other ones first. And I'll come back to you. I know where you are. Let, but let me deal with this. And that's why he will meet his Waterloo, you know. So, so for for this news from the east and the north will hinder him from pursuing after those people, and then he will go against these enemies who are now coming. All of this, remember, is going to take place in the three and a half years that is left of the 70th week of Daniel. While he's trying to fight those people, those forces, the Jews have their resistance group. They will have taken, retaken part of Israel, particularly Jerusalem. They will have retaken almost about half while the Jews facing other enemies. Then, he will not turn again against them. Having taken care of those other enemies, he will not turn against them. So all that you see in Zechariah 14, you don't have time for that. You can read that on your own, Zechariah 14, and read what will happen there. That is when he will not hit Israel, where two-thirds of the people in Israel will be killed. Only one-third will be left. They will damage Israel. Those women, they will be raped. All of this is all of this is clearly stated in Zechariah. You see what they will do there. And while all those you know, just to finish Israel, at that last moment, they're thinking they are finishing Israel. Jesus Christ will appear from heaven. With me and you, if, if we would just do what Christ said we should do right now that we are still here, the bride will be coming down with Jesus, along with the angels of God, and then he will deal with the Antichrist forces and the battle of Armageddon, and then they will be destroyed again. So you can see very clearly that the Bible actually tells us we are the place of refuge for Israel will be. God already prepared it. It is not America. It cannot be America. I just hope that we call this. I have to stop. God, time is gone. May God bring us together again when? On Friday in Jesus' name. So let, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we rejoice and I'm glad, oh God, that you have taught us your word today. Thank you, Father. That. that which man has not been able to explain to your children, as they lie in bed tonight, Father, may your spirit teach them still. Give them revelation concerning what I have been spoken to them, that they may have understanding so that they will share this with others. For this truth must get out. At this time, my Lord, God, too much error is being preached and people are believing the wrong things. Error, heresy, blasphemies. They've taken over Christendom and your truth is no longer being received. Use your children today as I receive this truth, use them, O oh God, that they will have full understanding and have will receive full understanding that they will share it with others. Bless them with divine enablement so to do. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. We thank you for your children who have been able to join us. 
Father, reward them for their sacrifice. We do not go for that. Both those here and those on the platform. In Jesus Christ's name. We thank you because we know you have answered this prayer. See your children through this night to God Almighty. Those who are in getting night deep in your head, your prayers. We thank you because we know you have the Lord. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. Take all the thanksgiving. For in Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Arise, O Lord God, come down, show us thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion, and we plead, Lord, all we committed to your heart, that this be the time to favor us in all of them, especially blessing us with the truth of your word. For ye, the set time is come, and you set it so well. Let this be the time for spiritual and temporal emancipation. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. We save the Christian blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. Mm-hmm. Let his face shine upon you and gracious unto you. Mm-hmm. And lift his countenance upon you. Mm-hmm. Lord bless his children, his pleasant peace. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise